these next um, slides are basically um, things we've gone over before, so it shouldn't really be uh, anything new, but let's go through them. So we do have some species of fungi, our Basidio mycetes agaricus. Um, I told you agaricus by spores was your everyday grocery store mushroom. A lot of times they're called the white button mushroom. There's shiitake, portobello. Portobello is your largest edible. These are all mushrooms that are found in grocery stores. So um, ecologically, um, these fungi have a very important role as foods. Also, truffles and morels. These are from Ascomycetes. So the ascocarps, which is the reproductive structure, are found near the roots of trees. We talked about these. Uh, they're underground, and because they're underground, uh, you can't plant them, and that makes them um, extremely rare, and um, they're prized for their taste. So truffles and morels. I've never tasted a moral, but I have truffles. All right, again, yeast. Um, it's got an important role because it allows things to rise bread, and it does this because it releases carbon dioxide during the fermentation process. Remember, when plants undergo fermentation, uh, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, and that's going to allow the bread to rise, and it allows um, the beer and wine. We went we went through that back when when we were doing uh, cell respiration. All right, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is yeast. This is baker's yeast. And this is a really good genetic uh, tool because what they do is they allow the, the um, yeast to grow certain medications by developing, by inserting the uh, medication into the viral genes and the yeast plasmids. So the uh, yeast is actually able to um, produce these vaccines and you can produce them quicker because yeast multiplies very quickly and it's a lot cheaper. It's also used um, to produce ethanol. Remember during fermentation ethanol is made and carbon dioxide is released so Baker's yeast has got an ecologically important role. Uh, cheese, brie, camembert, uh, Roquefort's blue cheese. This is all fungal fermentation. Any of your stinky cheeses um, are usually made from fungus. I'm not a, a fan of blue cheese, but a lot of people like it. Um, bioremediation. Now, bioremediation is when they use fungus to help the environment. So this is not in medicines or in food. This is to actually help the environment. And there is a white rot fungi that they use to break down pollutants. And some of these pollutants are carcinogens, which means they cause cancer. And they're called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And there's a lot of these when um, they're, they're top priority pollutants in the environment. And in order for them to be broken down safely, they use white rot fungi and the and the the minerals and the um, elements that are produced from the breakdown are not as toxic as the P A the P A H S, uh, which are carcinogens. So that is a, a very helpful role um, in the environment. So that's bioremediation. Okay, um, we also have fungi that can damage fruit. Uh, fruit trees. This shows um, mold on walls. And so <clears throat> in ecology, um, remember mold is a fungus that can grow on a surface. And when you have got any sort of wood, if it remains damp, you can get mold. And this is what happens in our walls and we can see that this is black mold that is creeping up the wall. You have to cut this out. There is no way that <clears throat> this is going to 
to die on its own. But what you have to do, if you ever see this, and you might at some point in your in your home or, or dorm or something, what you have to do is you have to spray all of this mess with Clorox and kill that fungus because if you just start sawing out the sheetrock that's around here, that fungus is going to throw those spores out and it's going to be um, uh, deadly, especially if you inhale them. So people really... Uh, don't do this yourself. Have to go in and, you know, they're kind of covered up in a, in those hazmat suits with respirators. And they sp <clears throat> spray all this down with Clorox and kill it first. And then you have to cut this sheetrock out. Because if you inhale it, especially if you have any sort of upper respiratory infection, um, it can be quite, it can be, it can be lethal. Okay, um, in some people, these are what uh, an up-close look a mole spore is, but mole spores can cause some people to have allergic reactions, and they can be very mild or they can be pretty serious. Uh, the spores become airborne, and so when they're inhaled, they're going to trigger a allergic reaction. And typically, allergic reactions involve a lot of sneezing. Colds themselves, if you have a, a viral cold, you don't have a lot of sneezing. Sneezing usually indicates it's some sort of allergy. So you'll have sniffling, seizing, um, respiratory distress. Sometimes if mold grows in your lungs, of course, we've talked about histoplasmosis. It can be very serious, but it can also grow in your sinuses. And sometimes people who have taken, you know, medications for sinus infections and they just never clear up have found out that it's actually a fungal infection um, in their sinuses instead of a uh, bacterial infection. All right, we talked about how pa uh, fungi can be pathogenic. Now, if it's an obligate pathogen, then it means it always is going to cause disease. But some of them are not um, pathogenic until the environment presents itself. And those are called opportunistic pathogens. And the one I can think of is probably yeast because... What happens is sometimes when we take antibiotics and we overuse them, they're going to, you know, kill the bacteria. And normally yeast is our friend. And it's as long as it's in check in our gut, we don't have a problem with it. But if it starts overgrowing, then it can be a completely different um, situation. So when we kill our our commensal bacteria, the bacteria that's helping us out, it allows this yeast to overgrow. And the pathogen is, we've talked about this before, Candida albicans. Uh, the yeast is commonly found in the mouth, intestine, and in women, um, and overuse of antibiotics can cause it to present itself in the vaginal tract. Most of the time, uh, Candida albicans exist in balance, but um, sometimes it just overgrows. And so we need to make sure that anytime that we're taking a lot of antibiotics, we tend to, we have to put the, the good bacteria back. And that would be, you know, we've talked about it before, eating yogurt um, can help with that or taking a probiotic because we need, we need that balance so that yeast doesn't overgrow. It's an opportunistic pathogen.